I feel like it's completely cut in half because both of my kids have a problem with bedtime. So if one is gone, then there's only just one to be dealing with that night. So yeah, it's it's definitely easier. They don't understand okay. what go to bed means yet. They're still confused that go to bed actually means go in your room and stop coming out of it. <laughs> Do they have a TV in their room? Because that's that's that was my mistake. Yeah, well, my daughter, of course, doesn't. We did actually while I was in Chicago, when I met you, I came back and my husband had got uh, my son a television. But it was, you know, there's obviously strict rules about it. He's 11, like, you know, also he he spends a lot of time in the basement if we if he were letting him play video games or watch TV. And we can't know, we don't know what he's watching when he's in the basement. So it's kind of like, it was more done to like keep our eyes on what he's looking at, you know? Understandable. Yeah. You know, it could be, he's 11. He's, he's, he's getting close to that time where he's going to start being more private. So we're ending the privacy in the basement. <laughs> I don't know. I, I just think of back to all the things that I pulled when I was 13 mm-hmm. and I'm just, and I have a 13 year old now and I'm just like, who am I to really say anything? Like, I know I wasn't yeah. hurting anybody. I know you're probably not hurting anyone. Right. But still, like, thinking about what you're probably up to is really grody, and I should yeah. probably put a stop to it. Yeah, well, and you can assume all you want, and usually your assumptions are are not are not healthy or <laughs> probably not right. So, you know. Right. Yeah. So it's all good. It's all good. Let's uh, Let's actually talk about the weeks that you were here. Oh, yeah. um, you are yeah you you visited me at my my place of business which happens to be owned by um a gentleman you do a lot of music with yeah and uh the fucking fire alarm went off in the middle of- <laughs> i know well that was the next day when i was returning something to um one of your one of your buddies that works there and i'm blanking on his name so god forgive me um well, john yeah, there you go. Um, yeah, the fire alarm did go off, and I thought it was really funny because apparently it hasn't gone off at all. Like, not or according to maybe as far as you know, it hasn't gone off since you've been there. Yeah, and I wasn't aware it was one of those that the fire department had to shut off themselves. And yeah. so it was a combination of you, myself, and one of the chefs <laughs> with like a chair and then like an apron, and we were waving yeah. the apron. It was a scene. It was an actual scene. We were like trying to MacGyver the uh, the fire alarm. The issue. But, you know, then a bunch of gorgeous firemen showed up. So I was fine with that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's always entertaining. Oh, absolutely. Like that's I, I I feel like if that's your end game, then it was a successful day. Yes. Yes, it was. It was. So tell me about what you were working on. Um, I was doing a video for a song off the EP that I've released um, about a a little bit over a month ago. Um, The EP I produced and directed, um, sorry, produced and wrote myself while I was, well, during quarantine. I think everybody was doing something creative at that time. Sure. All this. Sorry. Um, And um, sorry, I was talking to my husband because he's too much in the room. Um, so anyway, yeah. So I've been doing a video for every single song. When I started the project, it was like, I kind of dared myself. Well, if I'm going to do this, I want to do it all the way. So I I promised myself I was going to do a video for every single song and there's six songs. So it's a little nuts. So in order to pull that off, you have to kind of do these videos very quickly or else it just loses its point. So I've done three videos. I've directed every single video and the fourth one, um, was is special because I didn't I didn't actually write this particular song. Once I was by the, at the fifth song, I um, I mean, can I say his name? Go for it. Okay, <laughs> I'm sure we can. Um, Billy Corgan, who you know very well, he wrote this song. So I I just felt kind of strange. And like I said, after the fifth song, I just kind of was like, I'm done with this, and I I really just kind of wanted to do a song that someone else wrote. And sure, obviously I. I was like, well, there's no one else I would really trust and I know would give me the most beautiful song. I know then Billy Corgan. Sure. A beautiful writer. And absolutely. But I'd jump off the cliff and I texted him. I said, hey, do you have any songs lying around that you could let me 
have used whatever Aww. and 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 very sweetly he said he he gave me the aok and he sent me this beautiful song called peach which i really honestly had to text him again and, and say are you sure you want to give me this because it's really beautiful and I, I mean i don't know why you're not doing it but he said yeah i'm sure so i recorded it and then when it was time to do the video i didn't want to i was i I've been directing, like I said, every video. I'm exhausted. I'm just kind of like, I need a break because I'll direct the next two, but I was like, I need a break. Sure. And obviously, Linda Strawberry being one of my closest friends, um, I asked her and she said yes, which is, I'm so grateful for that. And then I wanted to take it another level. And I was like, well, fuck it. Why don't, why don't we just do a really beautiful, classic, classy old kind of tiny video and ask Billy if he wants to be the piano player. Like, let's just see what happens. And and he said, yeah. And so somehow the three three of us figured out a time and a, how to do it. I came up with the idea of Madame Zuzu's just because it's just, why not? It has a stage, yeah. it belongs to Billy. It has, you know, and it'd be cool just to do a video there anyway of his song. So yeah, we did it. and, and I, I I don't have the footage. It's Linda's footage. So we'll see how it turns out. I'm sure it'll be great. When can we expect it? I don't know. I mean, Linda's actually very busy at this particular moment, but I do know her well enough where as soon as she's out of the smoke that she's in, sure. enter the next smoky haze, which will be the video. So, and it, yeah, so we'll see. I, I Not too far in the future. I, I'll say that much. Not too far. You did uh, vocals on Seer, did you not? I did, I did. I guess I did, yes. You and, uh, yeah, you and Katie Cole were both yeah. on the title track. Uh, what yeah. was your experience recording that? Well, it was really fun. I mean, um, the it's a little strange to walk into a situation that you don't really know what it is. I mean, Billy literally just was like, can you come to Nashville? We need another vocal, um, a texture. We need another texture because that's basically really what it came down to is I have a low voice. Katie has a high, sorry, my, my guitar oh. player keeps on texting me. Um, Katie has a higher voice. So when you mash those two together, it sounds nice. And and so that's kind of what he was asking me to do. But I didn't know what the music sounded like at all, but I assumed sure. it was good. Um, so I kind of went in there with my eyes completely like closed. I didn't know where what to expect. And I, and I heard it and I was really excited and surprised surprised it sounded so good and um it was really fun it was really fun and it, but it was a lot of work for you know i think we were there for about 10 days and it was like you know how 22 something tracks i don't know um so it was a lot to cover very quickly you know um but you know when you have to do something you do it i mean i guess that's that's always my motto just it has to get done so get it done yeah, it's like uh, it's it's like your eight mile moment. Like you only get one shot. Exactly, exactly. My, my drummer's. I mean, my drummer, my guitar player's really bothering me right now. So if you hear <laughs> the podcast, just know your texts are bothering me right now. But I love you. J- just right. shoot me his Instagram. I'll tag him in the post. Yeah, <laughs> like stop texting. I'll get back. Featuring to you. a special cameo. Bye. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but anyway, it was <laughs> awesome, and it was. I'm grateful that I was asked to do it because, you know, it's, it turned out to be fantastic. How did you first get affiliated with that universe? As far as uh, Billy is concerned? Billy, the pumpkins, that whole thing. Well, I mean, it really started out with a friendship. I, I've known Billy now since uh, 2000, Jesus, um, over 15 years. So maybe 2007-ish I met him. Perhaps, okay. maybe 2006. Um, so we we met through, um, I, Linda Perry had done a record for me called Ladyland. And she started working with Courtney Love on her record. And so I was just there just to hang out with Linda because Linda and I are, are really good friends as well. And and Linda's I, and a badass. She's Not, a, I've never met her, but I've always wanted to. Uh, she's real, she's a real um, force of nature. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> and she's so fun, but she's a force of nature for sure. Um, and then Courtney just invited Billy to come over. And so it started out like that friendship. There, um, there was a very small moment where we were girlfriend, boyfriend. 
like that kind of moment. And then we just had the moment where it was like, we're supposed to be friends. You know, we're just, sure. that's what our, that's what our, that's what our karma is, is friendship. And so we always have been really close in that way and supportive of one another. And, you know, he, then he produced my third album, no fourth, it called Good Soldier. And um, so, you know, we've worked a lot together and we are close and friend and friend and we're friendly, you know, we're, sure. we're, what do you call it? We're comrades. There you like, go. Uh, yeah. Kindred yeah. spirits. We're kindred spirits. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. When it comes to music. Yes, we are. Yeah. And other ways, but we are very different as well. But when it comes to music, we're, we'll nerd out all day. That's all. We'll what talk. was it? Uh, what is it about your style and his style that you think blends so well? Well, there. You know, it's really funny you say that because I was thinking something in the along the lines of that the other day when I was looking at my catalog. Because you know, just I'm at a certain point in my career where I'm just like looking at listening to stuff I've done and like what have I not done yet that I want to do? Right. Anyway, and I think that both him and I have a similar, is ethos maybe the word for it? We have a very similar understanding of music that I think ha is kind of outlined in like the kind of music that we've done and how, you know, he loves all music. I love all music. If you listen to any one of my records, you'll notice it doesn't stick to a genre at all. Oh yeah. And neither does he. Um, I don't think he has, I'm going to get you, Chad. Um, I don't think he has um, e either. He doesn't stick to a genre either. It's just kind of like whatever he's in the mood to do, he'll do it. And I'm the same way. So that we have in common. And that journey is is very similar. You know, I mean, he's a lot more successful than I am. And that's awesome. And that's great. I mean, what is success at the end of but the day? I, yeah, at the end of the day. and But that's also why I trust him so much is he's, he also has this other kind of brain. His brain is also like, you know, a mathematician. -y. He's a, like, he's got, he's not only creative, he's also really smart in a million other ways. And I don't think I'm like that. I'm more of like, you know, the artsy girl. I, I you know, I just sometimes do not realize that, you know, you gotta put equations together and think about the business side, you know, sure. he's, a, he's a businessman and, um, Oh, absolutely. Through and through. Yeah, he's a businessman and I am not necessarily, but I run my business within my home and my kids and then my music. That's that's my business. I, absolutely. I anything else. Yeah. So I, but yeah, there, it's, that's my answer. You know, he was, um, you know, the first concert I ever went to without my parents. I'm uh, 34 now. Uh -huh. And the first show I ever went to without like adult supervision was the Pumpkins Farewell Show back in 2000. Right on. And uh, it just like my life leading up to this point where it's just now this is like, I, I remember getting so like freaked out the first couple of times I was around him, like in a work situation. <laughs> Don't worry, that is 100% normal. Oh yeah. <laughs> and, and it's just like grown to the point where you just realize just like he's a regular person like everybody else. He's actually probably more regular than people would like to believe. He's like the big brother I never had, you know, he really, I, and I would describe our relationship more like that. It, it, there is some sibling vibes there for sure. Definitely. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about an album of yours that I listened to all the way through while driving to uh, just some county fair with my kids. Uh, your, the Dallas Head album, which was yeah. released in 97. Yeah, and it sounds like it, but I still love it. I mean, you know, it's bubblegum goth pop, basically. Oh, it is so, like, beautifully 90s from the cover yeah. down to, yeah, like, the it. electronics behind the the actual instruments, like... Oh, yeah, the way it was mixed, everything. I think we also recorded it on tape. I mean, yeah, it is really, it's the, it's, it's the moment it happened is, it sounds like that moment. It sounds like the best album Garbage never made. Yeah. <laughs> right. Well, you know, of course, at that time, that's kind of what was going on. 
Sure. And so when the van happened, of course, that was just like what everybody was saying. And unfortunately, because we sounded kind of similar but different, the comparisons, I think, kind of killed our band because. Really? Yeah, I do, because it's just also there's only room for one type of female artist and Shirley Manson kind of filled that spot. So we don't need any more of this. And, and unfortunately, that sounds fucked up, but that's how it is. I, I wasn't old enough at the time to like understand the politics involved. Yeah. Well, that's but if I had heard it, yeah. if I had heard it back then, I would just been like, why can't they all just get along? I know. Why can't we just all survive on one stage? I mean, it is somewhat like that. But now, you know, the, the power is a little bit more in the artist's hand. Um, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes that's a bad thing, especially if the person's not really an artist, but it has good business skills. Like I just see this happening and it's driving me a little crazy and I'm trying to be a better business person, like for sure, especially this year more than ever. But a lot of times I'm like, well, this is awful sounding, but it's huge. And it's because this person knows how to run, run, the, run the shit. You know, I, yeah. I wasn't gifted with that. And I'm also, I, I could declare myself as a little lazy in that area just because it's exhausting to, to just talk about you all the time. You know what I mean? Sure. Uh, sure. You also end up, and this is sad, but it's something I have noticed. I think like when you start really giving a shit about your life and your career, friends, certain friends start disappearing and going away. It's very strange. So I think that stops people too, is like, oh, they don't want to seem like they're being narcissistic. But that's what you're, that's what you're, that's what you do. You, you know, not that you have to be narcissistic, but it feels that way, you know? Has, you uh, yourself. has that change in priorities and then certain people's reactions to it affected the way you create or the type of art that you make? No, I I decided to say they can all go fuck themselves because if they Fucking don't want me, if they don't want me to be happy and this is what makes me happy, then we're not friends. I mean, that's just the bottom line, you know. And I think that's the most jarring thing because I'm kind of in that spot now. Yeah. Where like yeah, I when... just like I got out of like this broken engagement that ended horribly. I lost a few friends just along the way and it's it's one of those things where you come to grips with the fact that the person who you felt so much for the person that you missed probably never really existed never really existed like it was yeah you kind of made that person up in your head i mean you know things that they were doing while maybe you weren't taking the best care of yourself or you weren't in the right situation for you right worked for them but now it's not like that. It's just, yeah, it's very revealing. It's also as depressing as it can be. It's a, it's a good thing, you know? Sure. You, are, you want to know who your people are as soon as possible. You know, exactly. You don't, wait on that. you don't want to wait on that at all. And, and I think, you know, the thing that a lot of people don't understand is just people, you know, everyone's evolving. Everybody is, yeah, it's trying. you know. We're all trying. Yeah. Just trying, and, to get, you know. Yeah, there is like no way that everybody who is in your life now is going to be good for you in five years. It's like, not possible, you know, especially it's just that's what also aging is all about is thinning the what is it called the herd or whatever. Thinning the herd. Thinning the herd. You know, it is about that because I mean, you really can't as you get older and you have more responsibilities, especially if you're having kids and stuff, you can't, you know, fit time in for everyone. So I'm I'm all for it. <laughs> you know, the less, um, the better, because those people really want you to be happy. You know, I just, so it's a good thing. It's, but it's sad when you figure, when you're figuring out that that's what's really going on, you know? Sure. But it, yeah. It's and it's, you'll, you'll learn about a lot about yourself, albeit grudgingly. Yeah. Yeah. No, totally. Totally. So, you know, it's all a process, but it's all necessary. Were you a member of the Black Eyed Peas or is the wiki page that the I wiki found you page, online? I don't even know. How, I, I got to change it. And I thought I tried a couple months ago and apparently it did not work. So I, I, th I'm not. I was never. I sang on a song of theirs on their one of their first records. Okay. The first record on Interscope. I met them, all Will, Apple, and Taboo. I met them when I was in college. Now, 
keep in mind, they didn't go to the college I went to, but that college had a recording engineering, um, uh, whatever they, they, they did. They taught recording engineering. I mean, whatever that meant at the time, that is early 2000s. Sure. So I don't even know if that exists anymore, but, um, my, one of my friends who I was in a band with was like the, the AD, like the, the head of the recording engineering as a student. So we were really close friends. So he was able to get me in the studio at, at night, like late. Now at this time, he also was becoming friends with the Black Eyed Peas and started helping Will produce their next record and was playing keyboards on their, their stuff. So we all were in the studio together recording. So that's how we got to know each other is in the studio. And then, you know, one day Will called me. He was like, hey, can you come down and sing a background? I was like, sure. So I'd go down and sing the background. But we all remained friends. I went to all those shows and they were incredible. Nice. And I even ran into Will at a party a couple of years ago and it was lovely and it was great to see him. Um, He's one of those other ones who just doesn't have a genre. Yeah, no, he can do anything. I mean, I, I remember seeing that immediately when I met when I met when I saw him work in the studio just watching him work I was like oh this kid oh, yeah. is gonna be huge I I mean he was so aligned with himself at that moment oh, yeah. and I just just the way he was producing and he was still very young I was just like he is gonna be fine I actually had him um remix a doll's head song I don't no know shit. Where, I don't know where that remix is god I wish I could find it but I had him remix it I was That's like, amazing. I, yeah, I had him and Dr. Octagon remixed it. I don't know if you know who Dr. Octagon is. Um, also, known I've as, heard the name. He's also known as Cool Keith. Keith, he's got. Oh, cool. I actually met Cool Keith. You did? Yeah. Well, he he did a remix too back in the day. I don't know where that. It's on a cassette somewhere in a box, but I I, I want to find it. When uh, when my friend who was um, at the time managing Reggie's Rock Club had her going away party, Cool Keith showed up and did this impromptu performance. Yeah, he's a real trip. Oh, he's a funny motherfucker. Yeah, he's really, I mean, I still, sometimes some of his stuff comes on my, you know, when you have it on shuffle and I'm just always like, wow, I, I love this guy. He's so good. Oh yeah, he's goofy as hell. Yeah, super. Um, tell me about... You, you uh, I managed to listen to this as well. You did a, an EP with, oh my God, I'm forgetting his name. Uh, uh, Chad Hugo. Not Pharrell. Not Pharrell. The, the other genius in the, in the, in the, in the Neptunes. The, Neptunes. Okay. the genius who ages. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, Pharrell doesn't. You know, Pharrell and I have the same birthday. And no I shit. remember, yeah, when I met Chad, he asked me when my birthday was and he I remember him like look give me this look he's like that's so weird that's Pharrell's birthday and I was like well no then shit. I, maybe we'll work well together and we have we still work together to this day there you go yeah so he always he thought that was and my son has my birthday too so it keeps on going ah well I have a uh, Aaron Paul from Breaking Bad so that's I have that going bad. for me that's not bad that's great I my husband and I we watched that obsessively when that was happening and I think actually nice. my husband, my husband will go back to it. Like I'll hear Breaking Bad music and I'm like, oh, you're watching Break Because you know how you like to repeat? Oh, like, sure. Just, like revisit a show like you're, like you're seeing old friends. I do oh, yeah. that a lot. I do that a lot. I have it. And that way with uh, The Sopranos. Oh, yep. My husband too. He'll rewatch that and rewatch it and rewatch it. It's kind oh, yeah. of funny. Oh, yeah. Are you watching Better my, Call Saul? No, but he is. He's okay. watching it. He's been watching it. I, what, what, oh, I, I, right now I'm overdosing on Shit's Creek. Oh, nice. Like I've watched, this is probably my third time around on Shit's Creek. It's such a good show. I'll just leave it, it on, real. like in the background. Yeah, it's so good. It's so good. It, it's, it's almost, it's almost really easy to overlook what good writing it is because it's as goofy oh, as yeah. it is. Because but it's just so, the, the it's way. Like circus. Oh yeah, but like how believably and naturally the characters evolve throughout the course of the series. Yeah, and there's also such beautiful moments too that you don't expect to happen. Like, it's just a beautiful show and it's hysterical. Oh, so good. It's so good. Well, I um, want to thank you so, so much, Sierra, for taking the time out to be on the show. I, I apologize for the audio problems. You don't need to apologize about nothing. It's all good. 
I, I, you know what? I well, I appreciate you being here. It was wonderful meeting you in person. I look forward to seeing you again. I do too. I'll be back in Chicago, definitely f- for sure. So I'll come back. Absolutely. Outside. Yeah. Awesome. If you ever perform, let me know. I will come see you. I will take I will, pictures. Well, I'm, ex- I'm trying to do a. Um, I mean, it's not a hundred percent yet. When I have an actual minute of time, I want to do a a Patsy Klein like tribute show at Madame Zuzu's. I nice. Have, that means I'm going to have to learn like at least ten of her songs. Maybe I'll fit in three of mine. But so. I'm just putting that out into the universe because that's something I want to happen. I remember I mentioned it to Billy and Chloe and there were, and, and there was somewhat of a positive reaction. Like, yeah, let, we'll think about that. So it's something I really would love to do. And I would love to do it there because whatever, it's Billy's house. And oh, yeah. I, I want to play it's, Billy's house. I will verify how hard it is to read Chloe when you give her ideas. <laughs> I love her though. She's just like a oh, she's, hero. Oh, she, she's unreal. Like she's I've learned idea. so much from her in just the yeah. last nine months. She's like a she's a juggler, and she's she. I I just every time I see her, I want I give her the biggest hug, and I just because I just I just know how hard she works. Oh, absolutely! So I'm always like probably giving her the most obnoxious hug, but she goes in for it, so that's good. We have bonded like, over the fact that neither of us sleep. Oh God, really? Oh, that's the oh, worst. Yeah. That's a that's awful. That's hard. That's hard to deal with. I mean, I do have legit insomnia, but I try to like utilize it in a positive way. It's hard though because your body does need that sleep. It's tough. Do you, yeah. you have a brain that just goes, 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 goes? Oh, it's like up? yeah, it, like I'm almost asleep, and then my brain's like, hey, yeah, here's hey, something that you regret saying 15 years oh, ago. Oh my god, that is the worst. I'm like, I did that today, literally walking from my living room to the kitchen. I'm like, why did I do that? Like just in my head I oh, yeah. out because I was thinking about some dumb thing that happened 10 years ago yeah it's like why did I say that <laughs> why do I care still yeah it's yeah. It's, a, it's, it's never funny. anything recent I have plenty of dumb yeah. shit that I said last week that I could yeah. ruminate on I think they should put that in scripts more of, of people just out loud in the middle of their house going why the fuck did I say that and then not explain what they were thinking because everyone does that oh yeah it's just uh, it's just part of human nature. We love to torture ourselves. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like go into a room and then forget why you come into the room. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a super fun quality in getting older for me. I, I do that far too, much, far too much. I said that to John just today when I walked into the back room and forgot what I came in there for. <laughs> And like no, John comes in and he sees me like visibly too. confused and he's right. like, what are you looking for, Dan? I'm like, I don't remember. I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm, I've been there. Come find me in five minutes. I might yeah. know that. I Maybe. might know. I might know what I was, what I need, what I needed. Well, much love to you. Tell Chad much I said hi. You. I will. I will. Thank you so much for having Thank me. Thank you. You didn't have to do this. Oh God! You know what? Why not? What am I? What am I doing? I'd, e- I'd either be uh, doing this or watching Shit's Creek. So this is better. This is better. This keeps my 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 eyes off the television. <laughs> <laughs>